In today's video, we're going to talk about a new component introduced in iOS 16 for SwiftUI. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe, open up Xcode 14 beta, and let's talk about view that fits. So we're going to create a new project. We'll stick with the app template and let's call this project fitting view. Of course, stick with SwiftUI and Swift and continue, toss it wherever you'd like and we'll expand our window. Now, before we actually do a few examples, let's talk about what the heck this component is and mainly why was it even created? So in SwiftUI, for those of you who have worked with it a little bit in the past, you might be familiar with the need of sometimes manually placing views on your screen based on the size of the device. And a hacky way that folks have been doing that is using a geometry reader and from the proxy, basically getting the width and height in the current or uh, super views coordinate space. And from that, figuring out how to play stuff. Now, there's nothing in inherently wrong with that. The problem arises is that SwiftUI is supposed to be declarative and this kind of defeats the purpose of that. So while it works, there needed to be a better solution and hence uh, the creation of view that fits. Now, I think the best way to uh, outline what view that fits does is showing an example. So let me actually create view that fits. It's nothing more than just another view. And we're going to toss first and foremost, a padding modifier on here. And inside of here, I'm going to do a V stack and it's going to have an alignment of leading. And in its actual body, we're going to use a for each for the sake of brevity in this video, where we're going to loop from zero to 15, where ID is self and we're going to have number in. And what I'm going to do in here is just basically create a bunch of hello world labels. So we'll say hello world and we'll stick the number in here. And I'll also give it a bit of a bigger size so it isn't super small. And then finally, we'll add a spacer inside this V stack as well and give it a background color so we can actually see it. So on the right hand side, you'll see nothing too surprising. We see our vertical stack or V stack here. It's red, it has a bunch of labels in it. Not that interesting. Now where it gets interesting is when I copy this V stack and I paste it down below, let me change this to be an eight stack. I'll change the alignment to be top and I'll change the background color to be something else. And what you'll notice on the right hand side now is where did our V stack go? For some reason, we only see the purple H stack. What's going on here is that view that fits basically looks for the first view in its uh, view builder that can fit in the current device appropriately. Now, there is a argument where you can specify the axis that you want to fit into. So I can specify maybe horizontal and it basically says, okay, I can resolve that the V stack fits uh, in horizontal axis, right? Versus if I change it to vertical, which is what this iPhone already is, it will resolve the horizontal stack. So of course we don't need to specify this. It'll just find the one that fits. And the best way to illustrate this is when you're building a Swift UI uh, application and intend on deploying it on different sized devices. Now, not just, you know, iPhone smaller and larger, but iPad as well. So the best way to show this is let me change our preview device to an iPad and boom, you'll see that we get the uh, V stack here. And if I change it to an iPhone, and of course, if I you know picked an iPhone without a notch, you'll see that uh, working as well. So that's basically all that there is to view that fits. It allows you to build views and not have to do these like hacky if else statements based on the device height and device width and the available allotted space. You can use a view that fits and let SwiftUI do its thing. Now, one last point I want to highlight before wrapping up here is in our example, we only have two views inside of this. This is not to be confused with the fact that view that fits only can pick one of two views. It's a normal view builder. You can have up to 10 views inside of here, like any other view builder. And if there are multiple views that fit, view that fits will pick the first one that it sees that actually fits appropriately in the axis. So it is an order of uh, basically importance, I would call it, because view that fits, if you, if you want the last view in your list to be the one that resolves, view that fits might pick up something that's ahead of it, so to say. So just keep that in mind as you're using this component. I've actually been using it personally for some iPad uh, 
apps that I've been working on for some upcoming uh, iOS Academy Plus content. So pretty interesting to actually use it and not have to use a hacky geometry reader, even though that's kind of been my go-to thing for the past year. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Let me know if you have any questions. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below before clicking away. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and new here. Connect on all the socials, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, you know, the drill, follow on GitHub, etc., etc. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.